Yeah. Now, when you walk around, because no matter how much work you've done, there is other public art out there. Yeah. Uh, and some of it is the kind that people, including the city, have paid lots of money for. Yeah. Do you have opinions about those pieces out there? Do you think the city is wasting its money at times? Um, I don't think uh, spending money on arts ever really a waste of money, but um, I feel like right now we have um, kind of a situation in our economy where um, I think that we could get like a lot more art out and available um, if we just like if the city opened up a few of the walls for free walls and like just gave the permission and didn't like you know said you know these walls can be done by these artists or whatever um, where it's not like this huge because part of the problem with like doing public murals is like um, you know you have to go through you have to draw a design up and you have to go through this process it takes like two years and everybody in there like mom has got to like approve it and give the <laughs> good housing housekeeping stamp of approval on it before it goes out the door or whatever and um, so you got to make all these changes and you got to work with everybody's ideas and like by the time two years comes around and it's time to paint this thing it's not even your thing and you got to paint it and like nobody wants to do it you know I think that's a big part of it is like people just want to paint what they are feeling and experiencing and like give it out and then it can be real you know and then the people in the community can kind of feel that and it's not like this big premeditated process and like if you see a mural that's been done that way it kind of has that feeling you know and you because the I think everything that goes behind it is still there you know and um, at least subconsciously for people and uh, I think if it was more like let's make this city cool and you know there's all this gray walls that are just everywhere let's let people that want to do stuff for free do it and um, just because I think that's kind of the way like economies working now is based on free you know and um, if you can do a bunch of stuff for free then you can sell your stuff you know and it's happening in the music world and the art world and uh, people are scared of it and I get I get criticism from other muralists a lot like you're taking our business and I'm like damn right you know <laughs> ain't fast it's a competitive <laughs> world <laughs> what do you expect <laughs> but you're, they're probably, they're probably, you're, you're undercutting them is what they're really upset about I think yeah totally. <laughs> you're, you're getting those walls and you're doing it cheaper yeah but I mean it's in interesting because you mentioned that thing about going through this process because it is art by committee to some extent right. and that um, much of the public art here in Seattle drives me crazy because it does seem so watered down yeah is, is what we need to do because we get the one percent of the you know for the arts tax money there right does that should that just be should we just like pick artist names out of hat and say here you go go for it I don't here's your think, wall or here's your yard go for it I don't even think it would need to go out of a hat I don't think there's enough artists that really have the uh, willingness you know but the ones that do I mean I think the community of willing artists would fit it well like I don't even think you'd have to like exclude anybody that would want to do it you know like I think anybody that wants to do public art should do public art you know anybody have you looked at these people in the audience should they be doing public art <laughs> at least these three should <laughs> those three, but not those two <laughs> no of course they god do. you've sized them up quickly <laughs> you're absolutely right and you've won a prize some more Jamesons uh, <laughs> But, uh, you know, there's a thing going on with the city right now that there are all these properties that aren't being used because there isn't money to start these development projects. So there are all these empty lots. Should we give those over to people who want to just plant their sculptures there so that it took Sam years and years to get that sculpture park up, and now we've got all these empty lots. Should we just let artists take over for a year? Totally. Totally? Will you do sculpture? Can you do that? Oh, yeah. Yeah? <laughs> you can branch out? I mean, that's the thing. You I do sculpture. Yeah. You've been doing but these murals like, for two years, and I keep waiting. There's going to be some evolution in style. Like, I, like these are so kid friendly. I keep thinking there's going to be some dark, near pornographic version of Henry that's coming in a new. Uh, oh, there uh, is. <laughs> <laughs> that's coming, or that you that you all. Um, I painted the youth, the city hostel, Seattle, um, one of the rooms in their youth hostel. It's completely pornographic. Um, yeah. Welcome. Yeah. To Seattle. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, and then uh, I just did a Johnny Cash mural in Georgetown that's black and white, mm -hmm. um, like a, a rendition of a black and white photo. Um, mm -hmm. So, you know, I mean, uh, I, I guess why I do what I do is because that's what I want to see, you know. Um, and uh, I've, done a, I've done a lot of, like, driftwood sculpture and a lot of... Um, uh, 
just hippy dippy stuff all over. <laughs> <laughs> but this right Seashells now. Seashells and stuff, you know. Um, but for now, yeah, this is, uh, um, I love it. It makes me happy to do it. Um, and I love character and I feel like I have a, a style of character that's original. And I think that's really rare. And, um, and I've kind of worked my whole life to like find this style that's like my style, you know, mm -hmm. and um, uh, it's it, it kind of defines me and it comes out of like a place in me that's really like, I think the center of who I am, you know, um, it's like the true self-expression of my personality kind of comes out in these like big, bright, colorful characters with like maybe a slight sinister edge, you know. <laughs> <laughs> See, I thought it might be like, you know, comedians that they say, so they were like a crying on the inside kind of clown, but you're, you're not that at all. You are no. actually that, you're actually that cheery inside. Oh yeah, totally. Maybe that's what people like me, New Yorkers, have some problem with, because I can't imagine anybody's that happy. <laughs> <laughs> I think uh, Regina Hackett, one of my critics, said it's like, looking at his art's like happy times after the lobotomy. And I was like, oh, that's brilliant. And I, like, I named one of my art shows that. Like, I just was like, that's what it is, you know? Like, everyone needs a fucking lobotomy. <laughs> I'd rather have a bottle in front of me than a frontal lobotomy. So, there we go. Here's, here's a little taste and toast there. So, we'll work on cutting that profanity out. Sorry. I've, oh, no, that's all right. No, that's I've okay. Slipped there. Worst things have happened. <laughs> I didn't even hear it. Um, you know, you go to the sports stadiums, those great, great monuments to everything that's important in city life. Yeah. And the amazing thing is be, uh, besides the sports going on, somehow we've decided that sports stadiums should be surrounded by tons of public art. Yeah. But the rest of the city, not so much. Right. <laughs> Surely there's something backwards. Why, why do the Mariners have a dozen pieces and the Seahawks have a dozen pieces? And then why isn't like Fourth Avenue littered with sculptures or mitts? Well, I think they kind of know what they're doing, you know? I mean, they got, like, uh, they got people that are uh, pretty smart running their operation, you know? And I think that they know that art's important to people, and um, it's important to anybody. Like, I mean, even if, uh, you know, you're a sports fan, and not that all sports fans dislike art, but, like, you know, a lot of sports fans, I would think, wouldn't know that they liked art that much. Um, but going to those stadiums is really important and epic, and I think that experience of that art while they're getting there is important to them, and it becomes like part of their like, you know, imagery and their imagination about you know this experience that they're having. And the people that are running that operation know that, and they have the money and the wherewithal to make that happen and give these people kind of a tribal experience, you know, and that's kind of what they're looking for. But we have more meaningful art around those stadiums than we do in Sam right now. True. <laughs> Don't we? Is, is there, you know, there's a big article about what's wrong with the Seattle art scene is actually the art schools, but is there something wrong with the museum system and gallery system here as well? Um, I, I would probably say it's based on economy and money. You know, I think like most, uh, um, most things are, you know, like people want to pay money to go to a sports game and they don't want to pay money to go to a gallery right. you know because um, they're getting more of a experience that makes them feel like a whole human being when they go see a sports event and they don't there's something missing at the galleries you know um, and what that is can change right. you know like beer the, and garlic fries yeah <laughs> beer <laughs> and those garlic in, I think fries <laughs> and, and it's made in the shade you know <laughs> like seriously <laughs> then we'd have the 12th man walking through uh, <laughs> walk. yeah <laughs> totally <laughs> so now if people want to know more about public art and more about the thinking yeah uh, behind your work what books or movies would you recommend for them um, I, I guess uh, I would recommend like Ralph Steadman first as an artist. Um, just look at like his works. He's like, a Hunter S. Thompson yeah, collaborator. It, yeah, mm -hmm. he's like hands down my favorite artist. Like it's when I need inspiration, I just you know I I, I flip open some Steadman and um, check it out. And then uh, I guess like books that I think are important to me, like in the way I approach life. Um, would probably be like Civil Disobedience by uh, Thoreau and Dharma Bums by Jack Kerouac. Um, 
and anything by Mark Twain. <laughs> <laughs> a good recommendation. Yeah, so, um, uh, but as far as art books, if you're an artist, I wouldn't like look at or read too many of them. I would just be work, w worried about doing art. Just go out and do it. Just do it, yeah. Well, I was going to recommend the documentary, The Gates. Have you seen that I, about the Christo and Jean-Claude project in New York, mm -mm. Uh, which is a, a better movie than an actual uh, installation, as it turned out, uh, and also a great movie called The Object of Beauty with Andy McDowell and John Malkovich. Remarkably, Andy, Mal uh, Andy McDowell did something good in her life. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but, yeah, but it is about <laughs> the love of art and a little Henry Moore sculpture that really teaches us something about how important art is in our lives, even nice. if we're... Uh, snobby wealthy individuals so <laughs> those are our, our, our two picks if people want to see your work all they have to do is open their eyes anywhere in north seattle essentially yeah i just keep them peeled yeah you know and stay aware and is yeah. there a, a, a piece or two that you go like these are the knockout henry pieces these are the ones that you have to see i would say like yeah that corner um it's kind of the base of uh queen anne where fremont and queen anne come together right over the fremont bridge on nickerson there's a whole wraparound piece now. It's kind of been built in three different pieces, but there's like uh, mermaid, octopus, and yellow submarine on Nickerson, giant goldfish, and then the other side it wraps around for four big walls around um, like, you know, almost a block of uh, coolness. And then there's <laughs> a... Uh, block of coolness. <laughs> <laughs> and then the one up on Capitol Hill is really cool, too. It's like a 450-foot uh, mural, 450 feet long, and... Uh, maybe like uh, five feet, four feet tall or something like that, but it's a whole city block long. Wow. Um, those are pretty epic, you know, just experiences to have just if you want to get out of your car and walk around and um, enjoy the scenery a little bit. Okay. <laughs> I think you want to get over to the Sistine Chapel and update that thing. It's a, it's a, little, it's a little dodgy right now. Yeah, <laughs> totally. <laughs> Do a Henry up there. Yeah. Now, if people want... To, to commission you or, or, or hunt you down or celebrate you? How do they do that? Um, you know, like the last uh, probably year and a half, I've just like functioned really off of people getting a hold of me off the internet. Mm -hmm. um, you can type my name into the Google bar and there's plenty Ryan of ways. Henry Ward. Yeah. <laughs> and they will find it. They'll find it, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Set up a little I think bit. I'm up to like 16 pages or something. <laughs> <laughs> and if you could finally give us some uh, thought for your fans and your critics out there about your art, what would that be? Um, I would say uh, um, uh, there's a quote by uh, Osho that I really like, and uh, it's uh, seriousness is the root cause of all problems. And um, that's kind of what uh, I'll throw out at everybody, critics and fans. Wow. So. <laughs> well, thank you for bringing a lot of levity into to my life and my daughter's <laughs> life and anybody who actually drives the streets of North Seattle. Thank yeah. you so much. Awesome. Ryan Thanks. Henry Ward, thank you. Can thank we toast you. you yet again? Cheers. There. Cheers to public art. <laughs> <laughs>